Now that most of us have had the chance to watch Umbrella Academy on Netflix, you may be wondering what other media is out there to fill some of my downtime. Um, I've made a list of recommendations that I think reflect, you know, the style, the tone, and just anything that you might have enjoyed about Umbrella Academy. So let's dive into it. First, I got to say, if you watch the show on Netflix, uh, please take a chance to pick up the comic book. I've noticed a lot of people are reading it for the first time, and, you know, this has a lot to do with the fact that Netflix uh, reaches a wider audience of people. The Umbrella Academy comic is described by author Gerard Way as a comic about comics. It's weird, it's fast-paced, it's creative, and for what it's worth, I thought Netflix did a really great job adapting this work, um, but when you upscale something like this for mass audiences, you're going to lose some of the traits that make it really unique, and then once you add in things like budget restrictions, you know, it starts to take a new shape. So the characters and the themes translated really well, and in many ways I thought the show was actually able to expand on moments that the comic never made it around to, but for your own sake, I definitely gotta say start here. Building off of that, another unique comic book world invented by Gerard Way was The True Lies of the Fabulous Killjoys. It features a more colorful approach to the costume-clad protagonists, the Killjoys, uh, who are a group of vagabond rebels that fight against an oppressive company called Better Living Industries. Tonally, Killjoys is somewhere between, I'd say, a combination of Blade Runner and Mad Max Fury Road, but being the follow-up work to Umbrella Academy, it was definitely worth mentioning here. All right, I'm going to try and stop forcing people to read, but if you were looking for a few seasons of a binge-worthy show that you may not have seen before, I would definitely recommend Misfits on Hulu. Misfits is a British sci-fi comedy about a group of teenage delinquents who acquire superpowers while doing their community service. It's a fun show that has a really good focus on uh, how the characters' abilities reflect their personalities, and it does a good job of demonstrating, you know, the difficulties of adapting to those new superpowers and learning how to control them. You may also recognize familiar face Robert Sheehan, who played Klaus in Umbrella Academy. Oh, and that guy who played Ramsey Bolton's in it, too. Save me, Barry! <laughs> if another show about superheroes is too on the nose, I would suggest binging Netflix's A Haunting at Hill House. Honestly, you can apply so much of the traits that make Umbrella Academy uh, to this show, but just without the superhero aspect. Uh, you have the big freaky house, check. A family that has been separated and is now brought together by unfortunate circumstances, check. A contemptuous relationship with a father who failed his children, check. Callbacks to events in the past that affected a childhood, the consequences of which are still being dealt with today, check. Uh, you know, really, these things are so similar, and it's only 10 episodes. You can watch it in the weekend, so I definitely would recommend A Haunting at Hill House. If Hazel and Cha-Cha were a selling point of the Umbrella Academy for you, I would point you in the direction of Pulp Fiction or Reservoir Dogs. Uh, honestly, Hazel and Cha-Cha really resemble that Quentin Tarantino affinity for the hired suit and, you know, sometimes an unpredictable amount of violence. I will caution that Link is stronger between the comic book counterparts of Hazel and Cha-Cha, who are a lot more sadistic than they are bureaucratic. So another darling of the Dark Horse publishing industry is Mike Mignola's Hellboy, a comic that Umbrella Academy creator Gerard Way has cited as inspiration for this material. Uh, Umbrella Academy and Hellboy share a lot of basic aspects. They're dark and rough in tone. They revolve around a secret society that deals with supernatural forces. Um, I would even say Hargreaves and Pogo feel loosely like the Professor Broom and Abe Sapien of the Umbrella Academy universe. If you're in need of a quick comedy drama to fill your night, take a peek at The Royal Tenenbaums. It's the third film by director Wes Anderson. It's a quirky movie that navigates similar themes of gifted children who face failure and disappointment in adulthood. Uh, this, of course, the consequence of being raised by an eccentric and absent father figure, much like Sir Reginald Hargreaves. I'd be hard-pressed to say Watchmen wouldn't have in some way influenced Gerard Way in creating Umbrella Academy. Watchmen is often cited as the greatest example of, you know, work in the comic book medium. Watchmen beautifully balances its multiple timelines. You know, it juggles the past and how things used to be. It revolves around the present day's issues and bringing old friends together. And also, inevitably, that goal of stopping the impending apocalypse. Sound familiar? It's definitely worth mentioning that music and pop culture were a huge tool used to flesh out the Watchmen universe, and, you know, Gerard Way, as a musician, was able to benefit the Umbrella Academy show by helping to plan 
the soundtrack for the show. And before I forget, My Chemical Romance actually did a cover of Bob Dylan's Desolation Row for the Watchmen movie. So these two stories definitely speak to each other. I feel like there's an obligation for me to recommend as much binge TV as possible. Uh, so I'm going to have to give a shout out to Netflix as a series of unfortunate events. If you fancy quirky, tragic, macabre stories, then I think this will supplement your needs well. Netflix deserves some kudos here because though I felt like Umbrella Academy faced some limitations, a series of unfortunate events was a really impressive undertaking. It's easily one of the most ambitious page to screen adaptations I've ever seen developed. This last recommendation is going to be a total given, but I really can't stress enough. If you haven't, you should try listening to My Chemical Romance, which is Gerard Way's band, the creator of Umbrella Academy. If you can peel back, you know, that curtain of the era of emos that has left MCR somewhat typecast, you find that they're really incredibly thoughtful and conceptual as a band. Storytellers can choose a lot of different mediums to deliver a message, and music is a really powerful place to do that, and it's often overlooked. My Chemical Romance's albums often operate like a soundtrack to a movie. You know, they move through a narrative such as fighting dystopian oppression or battling cancer. And these themes are really well reinforced by Gerard Way's unwavering enthusiasm as a frontman. It's rare to find performers who are this passionate about what they do. And I believe that is why My Chemical Romance has earned a very supportive and devoted fan base over the years. So thank you guys for checking out this video. Uh, I hope there are some useful recommendations in here and maybe you'll find something new or old that you know you never had the chance to check out and maybe you'll really enjoy it. Uh, creator Owned is a page that exists to you know, bring attention to aspiring comic book creators or creator owned comic book projects. Uh, that being said, you know, if you have any recommendations, questions, or comments, you know, there's a lot we want to do with this channel. So please stay tuned and um, you know, be ready for the next video. Thank you for watching and take care.